And now we're joined by Seema Verma, Executive Vice President and General Manager of Oracle Health and Life Sciences. Seema, thank you so much for being here. Pleasure. It's and great to be with you guys. It's great to be with you. I know that I enjoy every single time we get to sit down and talk it's about this. Fun. And so I'm glad we got this moment here. But you know, we changed this name from Cloud World to AI World for a reason because AI is changing everything. And so can you tell me the impact that AI is having on the healthcare industry and life sciences? Well, I think that if we talk about AI changing everything, that is certainly the case in healthcare. And if we think about it, in healthcare, a lot of healthcare is delivered by humans. And the I would say the toll on our healthcare workforce has been tremendous. We have an aging population. We have more and more people that are sicker. We, we're seeing cancer in younger people. We're seeing more mental health. And so our workforce really needs help to be able to deliver high quality, efficient care. And there's a tremendous opportunity for AI to help with that. There's a lot of inefficiencies baked into the system, a lot of manual processes. Yes. And so this is absolutely right for AI to help um, strengthen the workforce that we have. And we've seen so much change in such a short time. And I think that change is only gonna continue. So looking forward, what's this next three to five years look like? I feel like I could not be more encouraged about the transformation that AI is going to deliver. So if we think about healthcare and the challenges that we have in healthcare, they're around costs, right? We always yes. feel like healthcare is expensive. Our governments are struggling to pay for it. Employers are struggling to pay for it. And we as patients are seeing our costs go up. So there's a cost piece of it. And a lot of the, the dysfunction in healthcare um, has to do with the administration of healthcare. So there's a lot of potential for efficiency. And one of the big problems that are, is driving that inefficiencies is data and the lack of data or too much data or understanding what the data means. And so this is like the perfect use case for AI. AI has the ability to, to drive more efficiency, which will hopefully reduce our costs or keep, keep it to a point where it's more sustainable. And then I think there's a big play when it comes to quality of care, where we all know that there's different quality depending on where you go and how you get your health care. And this is an opportunity to make sure that no matter where you go all over the world, we can make sure that you know about what are the latest clinical trials, what are the latest new therapies and treatments. And for the healthcare uh, workforce, right, they don't always know. There's so much going on, there's so much innovation, they don't always know. So we can, we can equip our providers to have the latest information and to help them with their clinical decision support. So quality, and then I think overall, sometimes it's hard to get a doctor's appointment these days, right? <laughs> yes. And Tell so I think that it. when we give better tools for our workforce, they it should create more capacity for them to hopefully get us in quicker and sooner. Yeah. And you know, just really quickly, when you talk about data, and then you talk about an individual, it's not even knowing it, uh, where all your data is. And right. so, and then one quick point on that is I, I really appreciate how you talk about this in the terms of access is for both the patients and the providers, because the providers have to have access to all that information. Right, and that, that's a critical point about data, right? Because at the end of the day, a lot of the challenges that we have in healthcare are around data. And so it's not enough to just be able to use AI. You have to be able to, first of all, bring all the data together, and you have to make sense of the data, and you have to make sure the data is clean so that the AI can work. And that's why I think Oracle's in a very unique position, because we have all of the components to not only deploy AI, but to actually build the infrastructure so that the AI can work. Yeah. You've been talking at our various Oracle Health and Life Science Summit, Summit events about you know, solving the entire problem. And we heard Larry talk about it more yesterday during his keynote. Why are healthcare and life sciences such an important set of priorities for Oracle? Right, so when we think about life sciences, this is where we typically think about pharmaceuticals, med tech, devices. And obviously there's such a critical component of the healthcare system because they're the ones that are innovating in terms of new therapies, new treatments. But you know, in terms of the development of treatments and therapies, it's actually been very disconnected to the delivery of care. And Oracle is one of the only companies in the world that actually has a footprint in life sciences, in clinical trials, as well as in delivery of healthcare. And so we're bringing that whole ecosystem together. 
And the goal here is that we can hopefully bring you know, more treatments and therapies, we can bring them quicker and faster by bringing AI to it. We can hopefully make those, that process more efficient. And if it's more efficient, then that actually lowers the cost as well. But I think our big play is to not make a clinical trial something that stands in a couple of academic institutions, right. but to be able to do clinical trials across the board with all providers. And so we're gonna bring in the ability to conduct a clinical trial right at every provider's um, doorstep, right, in, right into, their, uh, into their rooms. You, you mentioned uh, the complexity and its contribution to cost, and cost is a huge issue in healthcare, as we all know. Um, do you think AI can really help bend these cost, cost curves, and if so, how? I do, and I think because if we look at it, we're spending 25 to 30 percent just on administrative costs. And behind those administrative costs, there's a lot of paper pushing going on by humans. Sure. Right, so we can, we can reduce those things. A lot of the things that we are reliant on humans to do can actually be automated. These are a lot of repetitive, monotonous tasks that can actually be done by robots. And that's gonna free up the healthcare system to actually focus on patients, but moreover, it brings down the operating costs. It brings the level of efficiency. Part of what we're paying for is the dysfunction that we have in our healthcare system today. For sure, yeah. Okay, so you just announced or introduced the next generation electronic health record, the EHR. This is very exciting, mm -hmm. and it's, it's, you know, even to think about what this can do. And so can you tell us a little bit about that? Why is this so important to both, again, providers and patients? Right. Well, I do think this is a big milestone for Oracle. I think there are a lot of questions about, is Oracle really serious about healthcare? And I think this yes. was the, the demonstration of how serious we are that we built this brand new EHR that builds in AI at the very base level. And so all of the tasks that doctors typically have to do by hands, whether it's notes or coding, all of that is automated. And the EHR is really important because that is the most basic interaction between doctor and patient, and that's where all the data resides. Mm -hmm. And so by you know creating this better tool for providers, we think, again, it, their jobs will become easier. We can reduce a lot of the administrative costs. But that's really just the beginning of our whole journey in healthcare. We're also trying to make the interactions between insurance companies or payers and providers a lot easier through our EHR. We're also taking our EHR and making clinical trial matching much easier. So it's an EHR, but it's really more than that, right? An electronic health record, it's more of a system of intelligence that is bridging the gap between payers, providers, and researchers to really bring together the entire healthcare ecosystem. And I know there's something, you know, that I definitely agree on when, when you say it, it's that the old EHR, you know, it globally has, has been a kind of a medical diary and or medical journal. And now this is so much more than that. The conversation is beyond just the electronic health record to the entire ecosystem. And that, that's, that's what's really exciting about the future. I'm excited about, as part of the electronic health record, right, we're building revenue cycle management, but our new patient portal. So yes. we announced this, um, and this new portal, it's probably the only portal in the world that will bring your entire longitudinal patient record, and it's a partnership that we have with OpenAI. So kind of think about it in terms of chat GPT, meet your records. You can ask questions that are personalized to your healthcare record and your experiences, whatever you're going through. So I think that's a game changer for patients. Yep. Well, there's so much more to talk about, but we have <laughs> <It always laughs> time flew by so fast. Yeah, well, thank you so much, Seema.